Hey everybody, it's Pendragon, and today's video is brought to you by W Energy. So I'm going to keep things short and sweet. W Energy is a clean energy drink that has no sugar, no calories, and comes in a variety of delicious flavors, including Galaxy Grenade and Dragonade. Not only does it give you no jitters and no crash, but it's chock full of vitamins and amino acids, which are great for you. Use promo code Pendragon for 10% off of your order and give it a shot today. And now, on to the video. Hey everybody, it's Pendragon, and welcome back to more RuneScape Hardcore Iron Man. Last time we escaped Hardcore Iron Man, we began the Archaeology skill, where we actually completed our first mystery, we discovered some artifacts, the Venator Dagger and the Venator Crossbow. And this time I'm going to escape Hardcore Iron Man, I think we're going to be starting construction. Now before we get into that, as you guys might notice, I do have a piece of candy in my inventory. Uh, there is a Valentine's Day event going on, and I, <clears throat> I happened to find one of the Devotion Sprites, which are going around, it was by the Lumbridge, um, Lowstone area. So I actually, I was, I was down there doing the Nexus, which only gets you like halfway to level 42 apparently. And we actually can no longer gather corruption there, so we got a little bit of bonus XP from doing all that. But eventually we'll have to grind our way up to level 43. But let's go ahead and move on to our next skill, which is construction. Which apparently is buy a house of your own. Which you just need a thousand coins by any means. You visit Alfred Stonemason, the construction tour in Remington, or the estate agent in Ardone. Ardone? I, I can never remember how to pronounce it. Uh, Varrock or Falador. And ask the estate agent how you can get your very own house and buy it. So once you have a plot of your own, you can start by build you can start building a customized house on it. So let's go ahead and do this really quick. I don't know why I pressed uh, anticipate there or attack the guard on accident. I'm out of here. <laughs> we're we're not the highest level. We're only level 33, obviously. So I could always do some grinding with combat experience, but I think we're okay right now. I also need to check if we have any of these rocks. We do not. All right. Well, Prince, will get those grinded out. But let's make our way to the estate agent, which is right over here. So we can talk to him and buy a house. So let's see what he has to say. Hello, welcome to the Gilinorian house housing agency. Wow, I had a brain fart there trying to read Gilinorian. What can I do for you? Um, how can I get a house? So buy a house, apparently that's all you gotta do. So thank you, go through the Remington house portal and you will find your house ready for you to start building in. And this book will help you to start building your house. Okay, cool. So, there are some cool little things here. You can actually redecorate your house. So, uh, certainly my magic can rebuild the house, the grounds, or the dungeon in a completely new style. I can even change the lighting. What part would you like? So, we can check out the house, which we have various uh, level requirements for. But you can actually get basic stone, you can get dark stone for free, but you gotta do a quest for it. There's fancy stone, tropical wood, fabric style wood, whitewashed stone, and basic stone. And then there is grounds. So you can get rough grass, which is the default, desert, barren earth, bone grass, or tundra. And then there are the dungeons. So your dungeons, you can do rough stone, smooth stone, desert dungeon, mountain mine, tropical cave, and stone blocks. And then, of course, one of my favorite parts is the lighting. So you can actually go daytime, you can go dusk, or you can go night. Which, night requires the highest construction, that's the one that I normally keep my house in. Uh, in old school RuneScape, there's actually a cozy cabin, I believe that's what it's called. Which is super cool looking, honestly, to me. And a lot of people don't know about it, sadly. Also, uh, this guy right here, Max, is a NPC that actually has all the many skills mastered. And that's where you get your max cape, so whenever we hit 99, every skill. And then there's also the true max cape that exists now, which is over in Falador. But we're going to make our way to Port Serum. Because this is the fastest way to get to Remington until you get the house teleport spell. Which I think is like... Let's see what level it is. I think it's pretty high up there. Uh, Minifos, no, those are love stones, love stones. There it is. Uh, it's level 40 magic. So we're a little bit off from there. We're only at 25. We can always grind that out sometime. But this little path here will actually lead us along the way past the goblins, 
has a little um, cave area over here, which actually leads to like a boss thing. We'll actually check that out sometime. And there's also a nice little mine over here. You can actually get clay. And back in the day, this clay hotspot or this clay area used to be a hotspot because, oh, did it not have the clay rocks over here? Hmm. They must have removed them because I guess they had they do have the crafting guild instead. But there used to be two clay rocks here, and if you had someone who was literally just like mining away and going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and hogging the resources, you wouldn't be able to get clay, which is needed for certain things in the house. So let's talk to the plank maker here, which we can get some logs by chopping down a tree and using 100 coins per plank to buy planks from the plank. So let's chop down the tree, and we can also get up some gear from Alfred here. Also, that's wood cutting level number six. So we're gonna need these nails, which we can only do bronze for now. Uh, probably some bolts of cloth, watering can. There's a bagged plant we can set up for our garden stuff. Our garden stuff, but we need some more of these normal logs. Because I know the recipe for at least one little uh, thing to build off the top of my head. Aside from the cloth, of course. So, once we get three logs, we can actually go over here, buy planks, and buy all. Now, there is an update coming out tomorrow, because I am recording this on Sunday. And we are getting four, four and three. You will no longer have to buy planks. Because you'll actually be able to build them in a different way. And the lumber yard that was over in Varrock, it's now going to become that fort. And it is not time-gated for those of you who don't know, so feel free to just grind your way through it and get all those tier 3 buildings and such because that's going to be super useful for you, especially late game. Now this says, after buying a house, uh, to visit it in building mode. So buy a house, see the Unreal Estate Man achievement. Uh, it's recommended that you bring at least 8 planks, at least 2 bolts of cloth, and at least 30 nails. So you visit your house in building mode via the house portal if your house is in birth fort, follow this guidance arrow. Uh, tip, bronze nails can be smithed from a single bronze bar with at least 4 smithing, or purchased along with bolts of cloth from Alfred Stonemason's construction shop. Bring, ex bring extra nails in case some are wasted. So, the thing with construction is that when you're building, you can actually... Did I just grab oak logs? Okay, no. Let's make it sure. If you're building, you have a chance to bend nails. And if you bend nails, they get wasted. So, that's why I made sure to buy a hundred bronze nails. Just in case we get super unlucky. So, let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. We need two more of these logs here. And then one more to get this plank. And then you can buy all the planks. You can also get sawdust, which I think is needed for a quest, if I recall correctly. But buy planks, buy all. And there we go. We also got a wood knot here. I didn't even notice. So, free crafting experience. And let's enter house building mode. And you get a new song called the Home Sweet Home. Now, I kind of like the classic feel of this. You know, it's textured differently, of course, nowadays, but... This was kind of a forgotten, also, oh my god, what is wrong with my armor? I am seeing just dots. Uh, let's ignore that. But, um, yeah, graphics are fun. The player-owned house is something that's kind of been forgotten in new school RuneScape, or RuneScape 3, as you want to call it. And that must has changed since back in like the RuneScape 2 days, quote unquote. Now, old school RuneScape actually has some new rooms, there's some new items, there's a construction guild, all this other stuff. This was kind of forgotten because house parties were kind of just forgotten because you used to be able to go like gilded altars to make a bunch of uh, prayer experience and socialize and all that stuff and people just stopped doing it except for the hostos um, prayer house boss now. But now with Fort 4 and 3, there's also going to be a change with that because you can actually get a similar experience from the altars. Now I know it's not the same, like I think twice as much experience, something like that. I think it's like one and a half times or something, but you have a chance to not use up bones. 
or to use your full inventory, I think, actually. It's one of those two. I don't remember off the top of my head. I watched the live stream a while ago. But anywho, let's go ahead and start building. So you can build just by clicking on the hotspot, as they call them here. And then you get construction experience for doing it. So we're level 4 construction now. And as you can see in the chat, we accidentally bent the nail. So that thing normally costs two planks and two nails. It costs us three because we bent the nail. So now let's just build all these crude wooden chairs. And I'll probably like work on my house during the uh, in between parts of videos because I kind of like working with the player owned house. You know, it gives me a sense of accomplishment to have that sort of uh, upgraded house and everything and to be able to have it kind of like how I used to back in the day with um, construction. And also that's level 5 construction already. So we unlocked the kitchen. So now we can actually get into this part as well. So you can actually build on the door hotspot. You can add another parlor, you can add a garden or a kitchen. Now, let me make sure I have this angled the right way. I like to put my kitchen on like one of the corners kind of thing. So I think I'm just gonna build my kitchen actually right here. Yeah, I think that would actually be perfect. And it costs 5,000 to make a kitchen. And then of course you can actually build tables, you can build stoves, and you can actually train cooking in here, which I find it pretty enjoyable. But let's see, we have two logs left. We build, no, we don't have enough place for the bookcase. Let's go ahead and build this rug then, I suppose. At least have this kind of crappy brown rug for now. And yeah, I think that's going to be about it for our construction then, I guess. I'll right click furniture you built in your house, set a crew wooden chair in your part and choose remove. Oh yeah, they, get, they cheat you how to do furniture removal. So right click, click remove. You can put yes, yes, and don't ask me again, or no. I like to just do the regular yes because, you know, there are times where I might accidentally click something and remove something that could have been expensive. Because sometimes construction materials get pretty expensive. So now for home and garden, they want us to build a plant in the garden of your house. So we buy a bagged plant and the watering can, of course, and then we can right click on one of these plant spaces and actually plant the plants. Or um, there's also tree spaces as well, because we need to get a bag of dead tree. Since we have five construction or more, might as well do that. So I'm actually going to get the bagged plant, a dead tree, and the watering can. And the watering can is only one GP for a full watering can, which is pretty awesome. But let's head on back in. And now let's go ahead and plant some of these so I'm going to plant the bad plant there and we get 10 points for doing the construction bath and now for the big tree space I'm going to plant one of the bag dead trees and you actually get farming experience for doing this too so now we're level 2 farming we can actually plant flowers now which are marigolds and um, another cool thing about construction if I exit building mode here you can have people over there are doors, of course, and depending upon how you have your place set up or position, there's different ways to travel around, to explore, and yeah, so on and so forth. So the bookcases you can make actually can hold lore books from like quests and such, which you'll be able to tell if you can get it from your player-owned house books. If it says when you right-click and destroy it, then you can attend another one from your player-owned house bookcase. Now, I like having those because I like lore. And yeah, it's a pretty fun time. So we can go ahead and try to train some more construction later on. But I think we're not going to do that right now. We're going to actually move on to another thing. So this is actually showing quite a few paths. We got the bossing path we can take. But we do not have Protect from Melee yet, which would be for our first boss, known as the Giant Mall. So instead, I'm going to start grinding out some more quests. If I don't lose my voice in the middle, well, I'm going to be grinding out some more quests. So let's go ahead and open Rune Memories. And let's go ahead and do this one. So in 2012, this quest replaced 2003's Rune Mysteries. So the old Rune Mysteries was one thing, and now this is the new version, like 100% new version. 
And over here, there's clan stuff. For like a clan citadel and such. Um, I might start my own clan in this, or I might join my main's clan. Well, I'm an admin in one of this, not... I don't own the clan, of course. But I'm gonna go ahead and store some things so that we actually have our inventory space opened. Um... Actually, I might as well turn in these artifacts real quick, so let me go ahead and teleport to the Archaeology Guild, and then I can show you where Soren, the Emissary of Zeros, is. So let's go ahead and make our way across. And it's not super hard to get to. You literally just gotta head west from the Archaeology Guild. Um, a little bit north makes it a little easier. Also, I'm so used to having double surge, which is unlockable, as I've said before. So it's weird not having it. And yeah, our armor is still textured weird on my screen. I might need to like change my settings or something. Let me do that real quick. Uh, let's just go to high. Did that fix it? Oh, are we lagging? A little bit? Nope, we're fine. I think it was just still loading everything. Okay, that fixed it. Good. And hopefully this doesn't affect the quality too much. I like to play on high, higher qualities, kind of like the graphics and such. But if high is what we have to do, then high is what we have to do. So let's keep on heading west. And there he is. This is Soren, the Emissary of Zeros. And you can talk to him about joining his cause, you can check his jobs, or you can just go to the archaeology collection, which is what we're going to do. So you can click contribute all, and you get some <clears throat> crown notes, and you also get, uh, as you can see on the actual collection thing, let me reopen it real quick. You can actually get a seal of the Prefectus Praetorial, which I think is like the perfect prefect or something like that, or perfect prophet. I don't remember the exact translation from Latin, but you get the unexpected diplomacy relic power. And then of course the second one, the third one, the fourth one give you different things. The Inquisitor Staff piece is actually going to be something super important that we get, but that's super late game. So now, let's go ahead and get started on Rune Memories. So we have talked to Ariane in the ruins beneath the Wizard's Tower south of Draenor Village. So I will meet you guys there shortly. And here we are back at the Wizard's Tower. So, for those who have forgotten, because, you know, you might be starting this for the first time on this episode, which you should definitely go back and check out the older ones, uh, you would want to go into this little door here to enter the ruins, make your way past the room guardian here, who is blocking the door for some reason. Okay, never mind, he just, he just let you pass. You want to cross the statue all the way down. Climb down the staircase, and then Ariane is down here um, exploring some things, also checking out the vortex and such. So let's talk to her and see what she has to say. I think I'm close to finding out what happened here. I could use your help again I if you're interested. I think I'm close to finding out what happened here. I could use your help again if you're interested. Never mind, she actually did speak. That was just very delayed for me. Uh. I hope that comes up as delayed for you guys as well, otherwise it's going to sound like I'm trying to speak over her. But whoops. Apparently she does speak. So I've got a question. What do you need help with? Let's just go with what do you need help with. I want to cast a spell on the source of the power beam. I think it'll tell me who removed the enchantment and released the vortices into the tower. I don't know exactly what will happen though, so I'd like you here in case things go wrong. Well, that sounds good to me. So tell me more about the spell you're going to cast. It's a divination spell that reveals basic information about ongoing magical effects. Eleron taught it to me when I first joined the tower. I've barely used it since training, but it occurred to me that it might... Oops. It's not normally used on effects this powerful, though, which is why I'd like you here. My finger slipped. I accidentally skipped that. <laughs> but I'd be happy to help. So apparently it's something with Wizard Eleron and then... There's a magical spell she's trying to do to discover why the vort vortices is still here. So, the only requirements are 14 free inventory spaces, no combat, and it's a long quest, so let's accept it. Okay, 
Let's see. Abak Destine Cal Mentor. Ah, uh, oh dear. Uh, that doesn't sound good. I must have miscast the spell. I can't seem to move. Uh, I think I'm stuck in the power beam. Are you all right? Yes, I'm not hurt. And I don't think I'm in immediate danger. I just can't move. <laughs> that was careless of you. No, how can I get you out? I think I'll be released if you can disrupt the source of the power beam. Actually, I've already got an idea about how you could do that. If we were to recreate the ritual that created the power beam, that would disrupt it and release me. Makes sense to me. Are you sure that would work? No. It's worth a try though, isn't it? If it doesn't work, we can try something else. But maybe I should go and get help. I'd rather you didn't. No one's meant to know we're down here, remember? No, oh, that's right. If my idea doesn't work, or if we end up in real danger, you could go and tell Wizard Eleron. But there's no call for that yet. Fair enough. So, okay, what do you want me to do? Take these runes. So Ariane gives you a fire rune and an air rune. Use the fire rune on a red vortex and the air rune on a grey one. If I'm right, you'll see something happen. Alright then. So we have prepared fire runes and prepared air runes. So let's use a fire rune on the red vortex. Alright, so now we have a glowing fire rune. And a prepared air rune on a grey vortex. And now we have a, a glowing air rune. Alright, let's talk to her and see what she has to say. I thought so. It's just a matter of picking the right rune type. Okay, perfect. You're holding soul fragments of two of the wizards who lived in the old tower. Um, that doesn't sound very good. My idea is that if you put these in places in the tower where these wizards once were, you can trigger memories of what happened. You should start by using them on the chairs in the library. Alright then. So, how would this get you out of the beam? What I want to do is recreate the ritual that the old wizards used to create the beam. I think that will release me. But in order to do that, we'll need to learn about the ritual. I think watching the memories of the old wizards will give us the information we need. Fair enough. Uh, how do I know which chairs to use them on? The chairs were probably marked in the colors of the four orders. You'll need to use the air rune on the gray chair and the fire rune on the red chair. You'll need to place both runes before you see anything. Okay, so is this color matching? Uh, how can runes contain soul fragments? Runes are pieces of rune essence that have been imbued with magical energy. Different types of rune, different types of energy. That's the fundamental principle on which tower-style magic is based. By manipulating runes, we're combining the different types of energy to create magical effects. The old wizards would have used the same type of energy to create the power beam. Something went wrong, and the energy ended up imprinted with fragments of their souls. So, if magical energy is stored in runes, and the soul fragments are made of magical energy, I reasoned that the soul fragments could be stored in runes. Once I'd figured that out, it was just a case of preparing the runes to store some more energy, and finding the right type of rune for each soul fragment. That makes sense to me. So, okay, I'll do that now. So let's go ahead and make our way into the library. As we hurry on along, I don't think you can search in here, sadly. But let's see. So there's a gray chair, a red chair, green chair, and a blue chair. So air on gray and fire on red. What Zanmaron got you working on now? Enemies of the Order must taste the flames of our wrath. I thought your Order perfected attack spells decades ago. Isn't Surge the theoretical maximum? It's not about power. I'm looking at ways to make the spells bypass defenses. Can't be done. Ozakan proved you've got to have line of effect. I know. It's one of Zanmaron's impossible problems. I meant to try to solve it to learn why it can't be solved. That's what I can't work out. I can't see what's wrong with my solution. Let me see. May? 
You're bypassing line of effect by angling the spell through a secondary plane using runes of law. I mean, it's not a complete solution, but the principle is... Do you know what you've got here? What do you mean? I think you might have solved the teleportation problem. That's not funny, May. I'm serious. We should show this to Azris. She spent years trying to crack the problem. She's written volumes on why it can't be done. If this is an elementary mistake, she'll have seen it before. And what if it's not an elementary mistake? Then she'll take it to the council, and you, my friend, will have a major school of magic named after you. The runes return to your inventory as the memory finishes. That's pretty neat. Apparently, that's how we discovered how to use teleportation magic in this game. Apparently, it was due to some sort of research that was done on log runes, of course. Which are runes that are actually used for teleportation spells. So let's go ahead and report back to Ariane with our knowledge. Did it work? Have you managed to trigger a memory? I saw them talking about the teleportation problem. Amazing! I wish I could have seen it! That could have been the start of the breakthrough that led them to creating the power beam. I think we're on the right track. So what was the teleportation problem? Most of the spells in the standard spellbook date back to the old tower. Combat spells were mostly created by red wizards, enchantment spells by blue wizards, and so forth. The only major exception are the teleport spells. The old wizards knew teleportation was possible, but they didn't learn how to create new spells until the last days of the old tower. Solving the teleportation problem changed everything. It let the wizards create the lodestone network. And the Rune Essence teleport spell meant the tower didn't have to rely on a delicate land route to get runes. I've prepared runes to hold the other six soul fragments. You'll need to use each rune on a vortex of the appropriate color. So Ariane gives you some more prepared runes. So now we have Cosmic, Chaos, Nature, Law, Earth, Water, Air, and Fire. So based upon the colors on the outside alone, we can probably match up that chaos is going to be for fire, nature is going to be with earth, cosmic is going to be with um, air, and law is going to be with water. So let's go ahead and try that. If I recall correctly, I believe it's also based upon like which vortex is moving more. And I think that tells you which one's like the one you need to use one of these kind of rooms are runes on so let's find out so i think this one's going faster than the other green ones let's try nature okay so that one was trapped so that one actually worked let's try on this one all right we got that uh chaos let's try on the obviously the only other red one here and then for blue Looks like this one, it has like the little white circles with it. I think that one's like the advanced one, it seems like. And then this one. And finally, this other gray one. Perfect. So let's talk to Ariane again and see what she has to have us do. That's all of them. You should be able to use those rooms to trigger the rest of the memories. The leaders of the four orders use the shrine room to hold meetings. That's the room upstairs with the statues representing the four orders. If you use the rooms containing the soul fragments of the four masters in front of the statues of their orders, I think you should be able to trigger a memory. Alright, so which runes should I use on which statue? The law, nature, chaos, and cosmic runes contain the soul fragments of the masters of the four orders. You'll need to place each rune in front of the statue representing that master's order. The orders were associated with different elements. Blue wizards with water, green with earth, red with fire, and grey with air. If you examine the statues, you should be able to see those elements. Okay, I'll do that now. I don't really have any other questions, and this sounds pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and climb up the staircase and reveal the memories of the leaders of the tower. But we actually have to make our way all the way back up to the area here all the way past the store and here we are 
So let's see, there's a statue here. Okay, that one's holding flame, so that one must be the chaos one. There we go. And that one's the Ceridominus holding water, so that must be law. There we go. This one is just holding a regular stack of runes. And also a stone in one hand, so that's earth, so that must be nature. And that leaves only one left, cosmic. Zanmaron, may knowledge guide you. Do you know what this is about? Strength through chaos, honored friend. I have no idea. I suppose you were in the middle of something. My history of Gilinor. I have almost reached the dawn of the Second Age. Ah, when my Lord Zamorak enters the scene. When may the rest of us read this masterwork? When it's ready, my impatient friend, you know that. Strength through wisdom, gentlemen. Do either of you know what this is about? We have no idea. I suspect Azris is keeping us waiting in order to inject some drama into her announcement. She has an announcement? That's what I'm guessing. Ah, here she comes. Balance of power, my fellow wizards. I'm sure you're wondering why I've gathered you here. Honestly, my dear, it hadn't occurred to us to ask. Since Gothix guided my order's founder to the Rune Essence Cave, the tower has struggled with the problem of transportation. For every rune we make, we must bring essence here from the mine through icy wilderness and across pirate-infested seas. Wizards of all our orders have lost their lives bringing the runes the tower needs. We have long known that teleportation is possible, but have failed to invent a new spell that could connect the tower to the rune essence. My fellow wizards, this document contains the theoretical framework that will allow us to create new teleport spells. Azris, this is amazing. If this is true... Templin, would it work? Mm, yes, I believe it would. It solves both the distance and line of effect problems by routing the movement through a second plane. Of course, we we'll need to find an appropriate plane to use. All I have is the seed. I will need each of your help in developing it into a ritual. No one of our orders can do this alone. Even so, what you've shown us here is a major breakthrough that deserves recognition. Whose work is this? It is my own. After a lifetime of searching, Gothic saw fit to grant me the necessary inspiration. You are too modest, Azris. The gods may inspire us, but the work is our own. Indeed. And there is more work to be done. We should all study this properly and then reconvene. I will be in my study with my apprentice. Strength through chaos, my fellow wizards! The runes return to your inventory as the memory finishes. So that's some pretty useful information. Apparently the four leaders of the orders actually worked together to try and solve the teleportation problem that was going on. But sadly, we seem to be just out of time for this episode. So next time on RuneScape Parker Iron Man, We'll head back to Ariane, and we'll see just what she has in store for us in regards to even more of the rude memories. This has been Pendragon, and I'll see you guys next time.